Good morning, Teen Sunday School class. Get your lesson 74B, print it out, and grab a pen, and then turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Most of us uh, nowadays have a cell phone, right? Uh, and we love to use this cell phone for all kinds of things. Calls, video calls now uh, are very important. And when we are expecting an important call, one of the worst things you can see on your screen is no signal. Not good when you're expecting an important call. Uh, or, or worse than that, uh, missed call. That's pretty bad too if you see that. Uh, especially if you know that call was really important. Well, we're going to look once again at Samuel chapter 3 and the call of God. The worst thing that can happen in your life is for you to miss the call of God. So we're going to look once again at this passage and dig a little deeper into our understanding of what the voice of God is. And how do we hear that voice of God? I believe you can hear the voice of God. You can hear the call of God on your life today. God has something to tell us in His Word in regards to that. Uh, something to tell us personally. We need to get our spiritual phones back on, get the signal connected once again to make sure we hear and listen to that call of God. Do we hear Him call our name? Do we hear Him telling us what we should do in our life? First of all, I want you to see that we have a personal call from God. I'm so glad that when it comes to the Word of God, we don't have to guess where it is. We don't have to figure it out for ourselves. Aren't you thankful for that? 2 Timothy 3.16 says, For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So God's Word is given by inspiration. It's God-breathed, God-spoken. Every bit of this book is God-spoken. It's the Bible that we go to to hear the very voice of God Himself. And, it, and it's preserved for us perfectly for us to read for ourselves today. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 10, the Bible says, And the Lord came and stood and called a dozen other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I've read this a whole lot, a bunch of times uh, in preparation for this lesson and other times throughout my life, but there's some new things I noticed here uh, that I hadn't seen before. And the first thing I noticed in this was that the Lord came and He did what? He stood. Wow. Th this is different than before. I I've read this a bunch of times, but I haven't seen this one before, that... He came and stood. I've never noticed that word stood. And here's another thing I noticed. When Samuel answers, he doesn't answer the way Eli told him to. Eli said to say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. But how does Samuel answer? He just says, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Why did he leave out that word, Lord? Well, I don't know this for certain, but I, I get the feeling that he leaves the name out because he's looking right at him. He sees him right there. So he doesn't need to use his name. God's call is an in-person call. I really believe that this is a theophany, a, a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ where Jesus came and stood right there. I can't prove that 100%, but it sure makes sense from what's happening here. Whether it was or not, the, the message is clear. God has an in-person call for Samuel. And God has an in-person call for us today, too. First of all, to trust Him alone for salvation. This isn't a phone call or a video chat. Jesus was standing right there, and he was willing to 
call Samuel four times. This fourth time, he comes and personally stands there as a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was so interested in Samuel that he stepped out of heaven and he came right there to meet and talk with him. Jesus was doing, willing to do the same for us. Jesus was willing to leave heaven for us. He set aside his glory and became man. He limited his power and became a baby. He gave up comfort to die on the cross for you, for me. And he wanted us to know him personally. He's calling our name, desiring that we would trust him and him alone for salvation. Uh, you see this all throughout Scripture in God's calling. Acts 9, verse 4, the Lord was willing to call Saul on his journey to Damascus. And Jesus suddenly appeared right there in front of him. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I love how when God calls someone, he often uses their name twice. Uh, Saul, Saul. <laughs> he did this all throughout Scripture. Uh, he called Moses, or let's go a little back, back even farther, Abraham that way. Abraham, Abraham. And then he comes to Moses. Uh, Moses is standing there at the burning bush, and he says to Moses, Moses, Moses. Have you ever had your parents use your first name, your middle name, and your last name before they say something? Why do they do that? Well, they're trying to emphasize it, right? Emphasize what they're about to say. He wants us to sit up and take notice. I think God's the same way. And He in His compassion says, says in His mercy our name twice. Remember, it's the Word of God that is the voice of God. And it's in the Word of God that we can learn of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We learn how He has come for us in person to this earth and how He calls sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 2, verse 17, When Jesus heard it, He said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Hear God's call to salvation. It's an in-person call. We need to recognize that we are sinners in need of a Savior. God is an in-person asking us to trust in Him for salvation. But then I believe also God is in person asking us to serve Him with our life. Samuel was one of the greatest examples of a servant. He simply said in verse number 10, Speak, for thy servant heareth. That's exactly what we should do be when we trust in Christ. We are His servants. He's purchased us with His own blood on the cross. And He's alive today so that we could serve Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In verse number 1 of chapter 3, here in 1 Samuel, and God called the child Samuel. Uh, and, I'm, I'm sorry, let me back up. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse number 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. That word ministered means to attend to the needs of others. We should be the same way in our life. Uh, Romans 12, 3 says, Think not... Of yourself, that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Romans 12, 3. Uh, jump down to Romans 12, 10. We're to be kindly affectioned one to another, in honor preferring one another. What's significant about 
this is that Samuel was doing this ministering unto the Lord. It says he did it unto the Lord. God is calling us to serve him by serving others. He says, in so much as ye have done it unto the least of these, ye have done it unto me. Now, what am I saying? Am I saying that every single one of us should be full-time Christian service? Uh, all of us should be pastors? No, we're not all called to be pastors. Uh, but he has called us all to be servants. Every one of us should be a servant of God. He saved us to serve him. Eli was an old man. Verse number two uh, says, well, let's just read it. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. So he's an old man, can't see, he's practically blind. But Samuel was willing to be there to serve him, no matter what. Anytime Eli had a need, he was ready. If Eli needed something, he'd jump out of bed to get it. He was quick to jump out his, of his nice warm bed and run to do whatever Eli wanted. He was always listening for Eli's call. We must always come to the Word of God and listen to His call for us to serve Him. Life decisions should all be based on the Word of God. We should have a Word of God reason for why we do what we do. We should ask our Master, who knows everything, what we should do, where we should go, what we should be when we grow up. It's interesting to me that Samuel kind of gets an unexpected message from God. Can you imagine? Samuel laying there in bed, and Eli has just told him that this is God calling your name. This is the Lord speaking. So he goes back to bed, and he knows, okay, God's calling me. What's he going to tell me? What's he going to say? If he's like most of us, or like me, uh, he wants uh, God to say what's going to happen in the future. Tell me what's going to happen in the future. What, what's my life going to be like? What, uh, what would it be like for Samuel? Uh, I wonder if Samuel was laying there and thinking, God, I just want you to show me uh, what I'm supposed to do next. So Samuel goes to bed expecting this great message from God, and God finally shows up. God's going to tell him what he needs to know for his life what he needs to know for his future, where he's going to college, right? Or what major he should have, uh, whether or not he's going to be a prophet or a priest or a judge. Actually, he ends up being all three of those. But God doesn't tell him that. Let's look at what he says. It's in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. And he goes on to talk about Eli. Oh, wait a minute, God, why'd you come to talk to me about Eli? I need to know these things. God was telling him what was going to happen in Eli's life. We want to know what's going to happen in our lives so many times, don't we? What is, we, we, let's, let's, have you ever wished that you could just open your Bible and turn to some obscure passage somewhere, uh, maybe deep in the book of Leviticus or something, and you're digging down there, reading through the book of Leviticus, and you read something like, Thou shalt go to Pensacola Christian College, study electrical engineering, whereupon thou shalt find thy beloved sitting near the Campanile, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall see a red 2020 Corvette, 
when a man named Bill shall speak to you and he shall give you... There's no such verse in the Bible. We know that. That's not how God speaks to us. And yet, so many times that's what we wish God would say. God would just make it clear. That's not God how, how God speaks to us. In fact, if someone uses that phrase, the Lord spoke to me and told me to give you this, or uh, the Lord told me to tell you this, well, that phrase can be kind of confusing. I kind of understand what they're trying to say from that phrase, that the Lord spoke to me and told me this, but I think we need to be clear in what we say. I think we need to differentiate between the, the phrases that we use, and we need to be clear in the phrases we use. Because God speaks to us through His Word, not in some new revelation from men. So, as we differentiate from God's speaking to us through the Word of God and God leading us, those are two different things. God leads us this direction, or to do this, or to say this, or to give this. So you'll find, uh, you're not going to find a, a chapter and verse that says specifically where you should go to college. But as we listen to the voice of God in Scripture, we humble our hearts as His servant, wait for His understanding and His will to be revealed to us through His Word. His Word will be enough to lead us exactly where He wants us to go. You see, He's spoken all that He needs to speak. We just need to humbly serve and submit. Go back to that passage we were talking about earlier in 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That's what's right. For doctrine, for reproof, that's what's wrong. For correction, that's how to get it right. And for instruction in righteousness, that's how to keep it right. God's given everything that we need right there in Scripture. And then he goes on to say that the man of God may be what? Perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. That we'd be complete. We've got, we can be everything we need to be, the, everything God wants us to be. We can know all that God wants us to know right here in His Word. He has nothing new to reveal to us. All has been said right here. We just need to humbly serve and submit and listen. He wants you to know His perfect will for your life, even more than you want to know it for yourself. So what is God's calling? Philippians 4.13 says, And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God's call is an invitation from His Word to give your life to Him in submission to it. To be His servant. To live for Him, not yourself. It's a call that says, I think it would be great to have a scholarship to a state university. But we read in God's Word where, God, you said the fields are ripe unto harvest and the laborers are few. God, you've said that I need to pray for laborers for your harvest, that you'd send forth laborers into your field. Lord, my life's not my own. It's yours. So I'm going to go where you want me to go. I'm going to learn what you want me to be. I'm going to be a laborer for you. What about God's call to be a pastor or a missionary? You know, usually we think of God's call to full-time Christian service in this way, but I believe we should all ask God for the opportunity, the privilege to serve God in that way full-time, but He hasn't called everyone to be a pastor. 
We ought to be like it says in Isaiah. Oh, we got to read that. Isaiah 6, 8, where um, God comes to Isaiah and he says, Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. Who, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. No, God's not going to call everyone to be a pastor. <laughs> Ladies, God didn't call you and tell you to be a pastor. But He has called you to serve Him full time. Whatever you do in your life, wherever you go. Guys, God may have you serve Him as a pastor, but He also may have you serve Him as a plumber. God may have you serve Him as a boy cleaning the temple and leading around an old blind man. But He's called us to serve Him with all of our heart. That's why it's so important that we be listening for those calls, those invitations in our life, those invitations to do more for Him, to serve Him more in, in unique ways, to do all He wants us to do, to do His perfect will. He wants to tell us what we need to know in His Word so that we can, He can lead us in the path that we should go. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Psalm 32, verse 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. God's promised from His Word to lead us, to guide us, to show us His perfect will for our life. We don't have to go around searching everywhere for it. We've got it right here. Just submit yourself to it, to be His servant and to obey it. We don't have to go around trying to find it. The promise of God's Word is that He will show it to us. He will show you the way you should go. We just need to listen to His call, submit ourselves to be His servants, and let Him lead us. God's voice to Elijah was uh, not in the wind, it wasn't in the fire, it wasn't in the earthquake, but it was in the still, small voice of God. So how about you? Don't miss the call to trust Christ as your Savior. Don't miss the call to surrender, to be a full-time servant of God. Listen every day to His Word, to His call. Will you be like Isaiah and say, Here am I, Lord, send me? Will you be like Samuel and say, Speak? for thy servant here.